uh, if there's some objectionable or people that are keen to argue in the audience, it's better. So if you object to anything that's on here, have a beer and say so. So uh, the first slide, the objective is just to say, you know, large government agencies are putting a lot of money into this. They're covering their bets in case somebody really comes up with a really useful quantum computer that's going to be transformative. And the big concern was originally for cryptography, but there's lots of other issues that people are thinking about. For example, the Chinese are sending entangled states to satellites and back. That is a game changer. You know, what, what can we do with that? And uh, the Army and the Air Force in the US are very concerned about that. They don't know what it's useful for, but it is a game changer. Uh, one of the applications the Chinese are thinking about is submarine communications. Now, if you can do that, that's really helpful. So where are we? So at the bottom here, I've made a statement uh, that we have 50 qubits, and, and Google just announced a 72 uh, qubit system, which is horrible, it's noisy, who knows what you can actually do with it. But there is a pathway to reducing the noise and making these systems pretty decent analog quantum computers. And Google's talking about 1,000 qubits. That's their five-year plan. Of course, that's probably ambitious, but there is a pathway. Let's say they make a 1,000 qubit analog simulator, and they can hook a 1,000 of these together. OK, what can we do with it? I think that's a question everybody in the government agencies is asking themselves. And uh, as a, a university, this is a giant opportunity to us, <laughs> for us to ask ourselves, yeah, that's, that's interesting. There's lots of interesting things there. So that's, that was my motivation for, for getting a group together to start thinking about it. <coughs> so I, with uh, help from uh, people across campus, came up with this list uh, of people to give talks. This is what we know so far. If you're involved in quantum computing, let us know. We're going to be running a workshop uh, in October, which will bring external people in, and we want to include as many people as we can in the conversation. So the people that are listed here are going to come up and say a few things, one or two slides. If the conversation gets going, that's great. If it doesn't, it'll be pretty short. <laughs> so uh, that's my part at this point, except for one thing. This is Google's vision. This is their blog. So you see that there's a threshold. Once you get beyond that threshold for error correction, uh, fidelity, uh, error correction is possible with that fidelity, and they're past that. They're at 72 qubits, and that's getting into the point where they argue that we have got quantum supremacy. We can do things with these quantum computers, so they say, that you can't do with classical computers. The pathway forward, well, we're going to have more precise uh, systems, better error correction, control of noise, but the pathway is straightforward for these analog quantum computers. 